What's up? Who needs E3 when you have an FTC federal case that is revealing more about the gaming industry than we have seen in a long time? So let's discuss a little bit more about that whole situation because now it has been revealed that Xbox has some major big plans. And let's just say the gaming industry and Sony have all been put on notice because they are now paying close attention onto what Xbox's next move is going to be. As covered by The Verge, link down in the description, there is documents that are starting to be seen by some of these gaming journalists like we knew they would be because that's what gaming journalists do. They really like to look at documents, and boy, wouldn't we all like to be able to just kind of thumb through some of the documents that both the FTC and Microsoft have at their disposal? But the one that really stood out today was an email seen by The Verge where Xbox chief Phil Spencer wrote to both Microsoft CEO Satya Nadala and Microsoft CFO Amy Hood requesting strategy approval to approach Sega Sammy over a potential acquisition of its Sega gaming studios. He is quoted in saying, we believe that Sega has built a well-balanced portfolio of games across segments with global geographic appeal and will help us accelerate Xbox Game Pass both on and off the console. The global appeal of Sega's beloved IP will help expand Xbox Game Pass's reach to new audiences around the world, most notably in Asia, where localized content is critical to success. This was all covered in an email Phil Spencer sent to his higher-ups over at Microsoft around November of 2020, which is obviously before the Activision purchase, but that was because Activision literally was out of left field. The company was in turmoil, they knew that something had to be done, and obviously Phil Spencer came in and threw a number on the table that Bobby Kotick decided to take notice of, but obviously... Xbox has some very large plans when it comes to studio acquisitions. They are not only interested in Activision, they are interested in a number of companies around the gaming industry. Now, at that time, Sega was not the only key target of interest for Xbox. Another company that was named by the FTC in another document was Bungie. Despite now being owned by Sony, Bungie was listed as a potential acquisition target by Microsoft. The document highlighted the value of securing Bungie's valuable IP, Destiny, and integrating its development and live operations infrastructure into Xbox Game Studios. But it was noted that both Microsoft and Xbox had identified Bungie as being a high burn rate risk because of just how much money that the, the game can consume. And then obviously it's not a guarantee. Sometimes player count is up because the game is real good. And other times the game is down because they released content that was a little bit of lackluster. But it was one of the highest hours of generating titles on Game Pass. Now, just apart from Sega and Bungie, Microsoft has taken notice of over a hundred plus different companies from around the gaming industry that are potential targets for acquisition. And they range anywhere from small developers all the way up to publishers. And some of the notable ones that were outlined in some of the documents were IO Interactive, Thunderful, Supergiant Games, uh, Ninetick, and Playrix. But there's also other ones on here that weren't really kind of taken notice, but these are fairly recent studios, in my opinion. We have Striking Distance with the Callisto Protocol, Munfish with Atomic Heart. We've also got Counterplay Games that create a that created the timed exclusive uh, Godfall for PlayStation. And there's also Hello Games with No Man's Sky, which is honestly a very innovative game. So... Microsoft definitely has a lot of potential targets for potential acquisitions even after the whole Activision deal. Whether it goes through or not, Microsoft is not done. But if the Activision deal does go through, one thing that was outlined for sure is that Microsoft is also wanting to pursue a big, big lead in the mobile gaming market. This is where it does lead up to what Phil Spencer was saying in the beginning of the acquisition of Activision, that it just wasn't about Call of Duty and the big library of games that Activision has at its disposal. It was about the mobile market. And that is where King comes into play. Because at the time of some of these documents, because remember, it goes all the way back to 2020, Microsoft was very interested in Zynga, but inevitably Zynga ended up being acquired by Take-Two, 
But that's where also Microsoft decided to shift its attention into Activision because now that Zynga was off the table, they knew that the next big move would be to obviously get King to further their advancement into the mobile gaming market and to making Game Pass not only a console and a PC style ecosystem, but also advancing Game Pass into the mobile market. One big thing that we can take from all this is that Microsoft is not only interested in expanding the Xbox ecosystem and the breadth of studios under its umbrella, but also expanding into the mobile gaming market and really, really making Game Pass an extreme juggernaut in gaming today. And that's where we can see Microsoft is really wanting to concentrate on studios that can honestly add to the Game Pass portfolio and add content, whether it's just a small little indie game or all the way up to a big blockbuster game, something like Starfield. This is going to be a very interesting time going forward because now this puts other companies like PlayStation, Amazon, and anybody else that wants to get into gaming on notice that Microsoft at this point is here to play. They are here to throw some blows and that they are wanting their presence to be really felt. And they also want to be an influencing drive, a shaper of the gaming industry for the future to come. I understand that there's going to be some people that are going to be very trepidatious and concerned about the consolidation that looks like is going to take place in the gaming industry. It's going to turn honestly into a game studio cold war where this guy buys this one and that guy buys that one. I, I understand the concerns for that. Yes, it, it definitely means that there is probably going to be some studios lost in between. But to look at the light at the end of the tunnel, there's also some really great studios out there that don't have a lot of funds to always create the projects that they're passionate about. And this is where Xbox is one of those companies that acquires a studio and gives them the funding they need to be able to craft the game that they're passionate about. And that's where I, I do feel that sometimes these acquisitions really help get a studio off the ground, get developers prominence in the gaming industry. And sometimes that's where they can break off and go start their own little studio again under their own under their own management and their own prowess. And that's where we get growth in the gaming industry because sometimes it takes a little bit of consolidation to create growth in the end. But for those that are happy about this or even the ones that are concerned, Please leave me a comment down in the comment section on how you truly feel about the news that is coming out of all this. To also stay up to date with all the news, Xbox related, gaming related, and everything going on with this whole FTC federal case, please like, subscribe down below. As always, I do need to please ask you to explore my channel, uh, look at my latest video, and also please, I have to always remember to tell everybody because it's a big important thing for me. With all this console war shenanigans always taking place and all the different platforms and everybody always at each other's throats, I always have to remind everybody to please remember, play the games you love on the console platform, PC platform, even the mobile platform that you prefer. It doesn't matter. Just enjoy gaming. I am Centurion1307 and thank you for watching.